Hello, my name is Sheree Shanti, and I'm here to start you off on this amazing journey and path of using the drum as a tool for your own expression. As with any tradition, there is a wealth of information and resource available to you online for traditional technique, traditional rhythms. What I'm here to share with you today is such a foundational approach. It's just a way to get you started playing the djembe. Keep in mind that each drum, a conga, a djembe, a frame drum, a dumbak, for example, all have specific techniques that are attached to them. So what you learn today on this drum, some of it can be used on other drums, but just keep in mind that each drum does have its specific technique that you'll need to learn to get the correct sound and the perfect sound out of each instrument. So starting off with today on the djembe, most important thing when you go to sit to play any drum is your posture. Sitting up nice and straight, keeping your heart open to give and receive the energy that's present and that's coming out of you is really important. You don't want to sit at your drum and play like this. Not only does it not look that great, but you're not really fully available for the energy that wants to come up through your spine from the earth and down from the heavens. So instruments, music, I always think of us as being the human instrument. So we can take energy from the earth, we can pull energy from the sky, and we can put it through our instrument and make beautiful music and beautiful rhythm. So the first three sounds that we're going to work with on the djembe are the bass, the tone, and the slap. So there's specific techniques to work with to get the sounds. You want to, for the bass, you want to let the hand be very relaxed, very soft. Always when you're drumming, the hands are relaxed and soft. So even a lot of times you see people and they're pressing the drum and they're working really hard and it looks really intense. But really, the closer you get to becoming comfortable with just being very soft and relaxed with your drum, the better the sound will be that comes out of it. So starting off with just letting your right hand fall comfortably in the center of the drum to get the sound of the bass. So on the bass, the whole part of your hand is hitting, but it's not flat or pressed into the drum. It's sort of softly curved, but relaxed. There's not a lot of energy holding the fingers together or doing anything. It's just very soft, very relaxed. So sometimes I have students that will go and put their hand down here between each hit. So you want to always think about when you're drumming economy and efficiency of movement. Keeping your hands close to the drum, close to the playing surface, and not doing a lot of like crazy flip out stuff that kind of takes energy and time away from creating the technique and the sound. So letting the hand be really relaxed and fall just comfortably as if a hinge is here, right here at your elbow, just using that hinge to kind of bring the gravity down. The next sound that we're going to work on is the tone. The tone is made with the fleshy part of the fingers. So your contact point on the rim of the drum is right underneath your knuckles. So just look at your knuckles, flip them over. Right there is where you want to feel the rim of the drum. So you don't want to be back here. You don't want to be up here for the tone. It's right there. So just letting your hands form a pie shape on the drum, making your thumbs come just off the surface of the drum, is a good way to feel that contact point. So we're going to use the right hand and the left hand. And again, the hands are soft and relaxed. The fingers are together, but not pressed together. So you're not, again, you're not putting a lot of energy in your hands. The hands aren't stiff. They're very soft, very relaxed. But the fingers are more together than apart. And one important thing to think about with djembe is that you're not pressing into the drum to get the sound. You're actually pulling off of the surface of the drum. So the tighter, the, the more tuned that your drum is, the better your sound quality will be. And you can just barely touch the drum. There's very little energy happening in my hands. It's really just gravity working with me. And you're pulling the sound off the top. I often tell people that if you think about the surface of the drum as a hot plate or a hot stove, so you don't want to you don't want to touch it and stick your hand there because you'll burn. So you want to just pull the sound right off the top. So we have bass. And tone. Bass, bass, tone, 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 tone. So that's two out of three. The last sound is the slap. 
Now the slap is the hardest to get, so be gentle with yourself and be patient. It takes a lot of time to cultivate a perfect, beautifully sounding slap. In fact, I'm still always working on my slap. One of the easiest ways that you can work on the slap is to take your left hand and put it right underneath where that contact point is, where I showed you for the tone, where your right hand is gonna hit. Open the fingers a lot more so that, you know, for the tone your fingers are like this more, and for the slap they're very open and spread apart. But again, you're not doing this, you're not putting tension in the hands. It's very soft. And let the hand fall, just let gravity do the work. Again, you're not sticking, you're pulling off the surface of the drum and you're just letting the fingertips grace the surface of the drum. By putting your left hand here, you're creating the space to kind of allow the slap to happen naturally. So I really recommend spending some time working with that. Take your left hand, do the same thing. Eventually you'll start to feel where the contact point is for the slap. The contact point for the slap is more on the fingertips. It's very little contact here on the fleshy parts of the fingers. Now again, for different drums you'll have a different technique. For a conga, it's a completely different slap. So really working with just this drum and the djembe, the idea is you're not doing this. A lot of times people will try to claw the drum. You're not clawing. It's very soft. It's very relaxed. The fingers are open and you get that high cracking sound. We're going to work on your first exercise, and this is the culmination of the first lesson. This is a great exercise to work on forever and ever, just to work on your basic sounds, bass, tone, and slap. So we're going to play bass, bass, tone, tone, slap, slap, alternating each time with the opposite hand. So bass, bass, tone, tone, slap, slap, bass, bass, exercise as just a way to build endurance, to build your technique, to create your sounds. You can work with it a little bit every day and to get a little bit more speed every day so that eventually you'll be practicing, starting off slow, moving into a faster rhythm. When you start to lose it, backtracking a little bit and starting again at a slower speed. So I'll just give you a short demonstration and then you can practice on your own as much as you want.